So last week in part two, we found out how do astronauts move around in space. But now the question is, what kind of science stuff do they do on their missions? Why do they go in outer space in the first place? Throughout the day, the astronauts are working hard, doing all kinds of science experiments, and organizing and making repairs on the International Space Station. This is Columbus, the European module. It has science experiments all over. You could see it looks a little bit crowded. And here we do a lot of our medical experiments. Now here's astronaut Alex and astronaut Oleg working hard together on a science project of some kind. You see that camera floating away up at the top? That's on the Quick, astronaut Oleg, grab it. Oh, thank goodness. It's safe. Yes, right now they're speaking Russian with scientists back on Earth. A lot of times astronauts do science experiments with people back on Earth. Here they're doing a science project with middle school kids back on Earth, and they're going to learn about pendulums. How do pendulums work on Earth and in outer space? So here they have an eraser on a string, and if you let it go, it's going to go this way with the arrow. But then, what's it going to do after that? Let's see. Aha, it swings back, because gravity is going to pull it back down to the Earth. But in outer space, there's basically no gravity. So what happens okay, then? Start at zero, three, two. So this is the way it's gonna go, but then what's it gonna do after that? Is it gonna swing back? One. Whoa, you see what it's doing? Look at that. What's it doing? So our string is remaining taut. And it's slowing down a little bit there. And now you see it's not even quite enough force to be pulling our knot around. And that's probably because of the friction of our, of our dental floss on the, on the pencil there. A pendulum in space is going to act differently than a pendulum down on the ground. Thanks, astronaut Katie, and thanks kids back on Earth for working together on that. Look at that. Whoa, it's slowing down. I want, to show, I want to show you why we do these experiments, and that is because this is a bag of water, okay? And I'm squeezing, squeezing, let's see. Now what happens if you squeeze a bottle of water or you spill a cup of water on Earth? What happens to the water? Where does it go? <laughs> yeah. But what happens when you do the same thing in space? Let's watch. So it's a brand new bag of water, and so my straw was a little crimped there, and I'm gonna come a little fo closer, and you can see this giant blob of water, and we're getting to see in space what do liquids really, really want to do. Whoa, wow, that amazing. get that. That is amazing. Wow. You can even see her. You see her, she's upside down. Oh, I'm curious, because oh, I what's know you have kids at home, how do you stay close to your kids? Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, astronaut Katie, can you show us what a water science project in space looks like? And I'm shaking up our, our fluids experiment so you can kind of see, you know, what the what a real experiment looks like and not just uh, playing with our water drops, but understanding how fluids behave in space. Well, it, it has to do with everything we do at home and everything that we wear, everything that is in our house that is made with a process of something flowing through a pipe. We need to understand what liquids do and this experiment actually shows us um, how to design fuel tanks for satellites. And you think, well, gee, why would I care? Everybody uses a cell phone, electronic devices, communication, military defense, you name it. And it all comes from things like this. This is what it looks like to look down on the Earth from the International Space Station. It's fun for astronaut Katie and very important for her to do all these experiments, but she's a mom. Most astronauts are moms and dads. They are in space for a really long time, six months or more, and they have children that have to stay down on Earth. They miss their children very much. 
When we talk about um, trying to keep my son interested, another way I do that is actually to bring um, one, some, one of his things with me up to space. He's a big fan, and so am I, of Calvin and Hobbes. And so um, I've brought a little, uh, a little Hobbes up in space with me. And I bring Hobbes to do experiments, and I take pictures and send them down to the ground so he understands what I'm doing every day. And I did that while I was training for this mission as well. See that? She brought a stuffed animal up with her that reminds her of her son. I certainly miss my family quite a bit, and uh, but it, at the same time, it's not as if I wish to be there. I'm really happy to be here. You know, just being on the earth and walking around on your feet, and I think smelling, and, and smelling, you know, just the, the garden and outside and the street and cars, and that, that kind of sense is a little missing up here. And even just listening to noises that aren't just the hum of the space station and feeling the wind. I'm looking forward to maybe being on a beach and feeling the wind and looking at the ocean. Okay, so I got this water bottle. I'm gonna do the same water bottle thing that they do in the International Space Station. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna twist off the cap. I'm gonna squeeze the bottle very gently and it's gonna show a giant water bubble and then the water bubble is gonna float in front of my face and then I'm gonna slurp it up like this. <laughs> what do you think, is it gonna work? You don't think it's gonna work? I'm an optimist. I think it's gonna work. Let's try it, let's try it out. Okay, so, I'm gonna squeeze the bottle very gently. Maybe I have to squeeze it harder. Oh, ah, oh, geez. Oh, I forgot about gravity. All those experiments make me really hungry just thinking about it. How do astronauts eat in space? Let's find out in part four.